it is now time for the Mariners to start thinking about what they're going to do in this offseason. I think it is about as important as it gets for the Mariners, as important as it's been in the history of this franchise, certainly since they were able to stay here in the, in the mid-90s. And unlike free agent shopping in football, there's very little reason to show any restraint. Right? We have that debate about, oh, well, what should, the, uh, what should the Rams do? Is it a problem for them to trade away these picks or to sign all these players? And Stacy mentioned the, uh, the credit card analogy, and uh, you know, it's a familiar one for good reason. You can't afford everything in a salary cap world like the NFL. Eventually, that's going to come back to bite you. The same thing was true for the Kraken as they were going through their offseason. Every dollar you spend now is a dollar you can't spend later. But that's not true in baseball. And the Mariners have plenty of money, so there is no reason for them to show restraint. They can be in on everybody. There's no cap. You do have to be a little bit mindful of positions and blocking the growth of some of your young talent. So there are probably some specific directions you'll want to go. But other than that, you can add as much talent as you want. There's no such thing as too much pitching. There's no such thing as too much hitting. Like You can just get as good as you want to be. So I see probably four positions that are of the most importance for them this offseason. Third base, second base, starting pitcher, and catcher. Those would be the four spots I would really like to see them upgrade. They could probably use some veteran outfield help. I mean, like, there's other things they could do to, to help improve their squad. But my, my read on it is third base, second base, starting pitcher, and catcher. Okay? So who are you going to go get for those spots? Well, we've talked a lot about second base. Marcus Semien, to me, leads the pack. 31 years old, coming off an incredible season, understands the AL West, uh, just a good, solid hitter, plays good defense. I, I don't think he will be as expensive as some of the other big shortstops that are out there. Obviously, Correa and Seager, I think, are out of your league. I don't think either are coming here. I think Baez is an intriguing one, and certainly his name will be on this list as well. But I, my, my money would be focused first on Marcus Semien to come here and, and fit in with, with Crawford at short and him at second base, I think you would have a really good up-the-middle combo for the next few years, and, and hopefully that's a reasonable thing that you could go after. Now, maybe the market goes crazy for him. Maybe you're not able to compete. Maybe he just wants to stay in Toronto or something else like that, and there's nothing you can do. But I would be spending my money on, first off, Marcus Semien, and if that doesn't work out, Javier Baez. So that, that would be my first spot. Number two. And this is where I'm going to give you a name that maybe you haven't thought of before, but I think he would be a really interesting fit with the Mariners. And that's at third base. You've got to, you've got to not just replace Kyle Seeger, you've got to find somebody to be an upgrade there. Okay? Now, Abraham Toro, decent start, right? Came out here, looked really good when he first showed up in Seattle, showed that maybe there's something there. Third base is his natural position. But I would agree with what Shannon Dreyer said on this air a couple days ago, which is that I don't think he's done enough to earn that job. Doesn't mean you don't give him an opportunity to compete for it, and he can play both second and third, and he's a good backup option if some of what you're trying to do doesn't work. But I believe that he has not earned that job. You have the opportunity to go improve. You should go do that. I don't think anybody would disagree with you. All right. So who are you going to go get to play third? Now, you could go with one of the shortstops and try to put them there, right? You could be, it could be Trevor Story, who probably would be a good fit moving from short to third. Um, there are a couple of third basemen that are out there. Chris Bryant is a name that you will hear a lot. I don't think he's a, a realistic opportunity, but certainly that's a name that, that I know a lot of Mariners fans are excited about, and I know the Mariners like him. So that is probably somebody that they will be in on and attempt to get. I just don't know that it'll happen. If you can't get Bryant, and you don't want to go after two of these other kids like Story, then let me give you two trade candidates. We've talked about Jose Ramirez. His name has been out there a lot because, you know, it's Cleveland and they have, you know, seem to deal players like that so that they can get value back. You'd have to give up a lot to get him because of his age. He's young, because he's cheap. He's on a very team friendly deal. So if you wanted to pry him out of Cleveland, you would have to bowl them over, right? It would probably involve three prospects that you were already familiar with. Not, not Julio, not Kelnick, but three prospects whose names you know. Probably Nuelve Marte and then two of your good pitchers. Okay? Yeah. Maybe that gets it done for Jose Ramirez. He'd be very expensive. Okay. But unbelievable, unbelievable player. So that's one, one player and one option. Let me give you the other name, though. And I don't know whether you've thought about this one or not because I, don't, I haven't heard his name out there. But the Oakland A's just lost their 
manager, Bob Melvin, finally jumped ship. It's like, I'm done. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Mm -hmm. There has been incredible speculation that Billy Bean will not continue there. At some point, the A's are just, they're, they're done, and they're going to trade more of their players and have to kind of start over. But that's always been their M.O., but I think even more so if they end up losing sort of the names that have made them in their coaching staff and in their front office. You going where I think you're going with this? Would you be interested in Matt Chapman? Yes. He had a bad year last year. I would absolutely be interested in Matt Chapman. He wasn't very good last year, right? But don't you think Matt Chapman's a really intriguing possibility if you could find a way to swing a deal for him? I don't think he would cost as much as, as uh, Jose Ramirez because he's coming off a pretty bad year for him. Now, let me also be clear about something. In his bad year, he was much better than Kyle Seager. He's been a Mariner killer, too. He was much better than Seager this year. I, I, like, look at his war. Kyle Seager, two war this year. Matt Chapman, any guesses? Three and a half. On a bad year? Huh. On a bad year for him. And he's 28. His war by season, if you throw out 2020, he only played in 37 games last year. Okay? His rookie, he was 3.2. 2018, 7.6. I have to get away. Hold on. Can't tell if that's a 6 or an 8. 7.6. Getting old. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 2019, 7.7. 2020, kind of a loss. You know, you can't really look at war because it's a cumulative thing. And then last year, in his down year, 3.5. Okay? Yeah, his batting average was awful, 210, but he still got on base 31% of the time, slugged 400, and had an OPS over 700, which is obviously way down for him. But he plays gold glove third base. And, and does all of that. It'll be 28 years or 29 years old when the season starts next year. It'll be his age 29 season. With those stretches of struggling to hit last year, I just don't know if you want to go out. If you're going out shopping and you're like, let's go get the guy, do you really want someone that was struggling to hit? I think that he had a Even bad year. Even if he gets year. on base. They had a lot of guys that would get on base but not hit last year. But what happened? So so maybe this isn't your first day target, like day one of uh, of, of hot stove season here in a couple days. It starts in five days. What if you make an attempt for Chris Bryant? No go. Okay? It didn't work out. You try to deal for Jose Ramirez, but he's so expensive that you've got to give up. Either he doesn't want to come, they don't want to trade him, or you just can't pull it off. And story signs somewhere else. And you like Baez or you like Semyon at second. You get one of them, but you still need a third baseman. You still need somebody with some pop. You don't think having Matt Chapman is down year last year. You're right, Mora. He still had 27 home runs. He had 36 in 2019, playing in a hit in a pitcher's ballpark. You bring him here and put him in a good lineup. Now, he had Matt Olson behind him. Like he had some advantages last year. He won't even have to face Paul Seawald's slider again. Think about what that could do for Matt Chapman if he were here. So I like it. I, I think it would be a name that I'm at least going to follow hey, this offseason. I've off always really liked Matt Chapman. I'm curious to see whether or not they would move him. I don't have any information on that other than that I think he's interesting. 